more and more people are really interested in eating healthy foods, but not everyone has the same access. It's very essential to have corner stores that have healthy options available at low prices to the community. I think what's lacking is uh, the knowledge about food and how to ex access food, how to grow your own food. Minnesota is among the worst states for access to a grocery store, affecting many places across the state. What are individuals and organizations doing to eliminate food deserts by providing fresh, healthy food? I'm Rana Kaman. This is Our Issues, Twin Cities. Every day, Miss Tanya prepares her preschoolers for lunch. I love to see my friends using their very best manners and making sure they have a napkin in front of them. The soon-to-be kindergartners set their lunch tables and serve their own food. At New Horizon in Apple Valley, healthy eating is taught at an early age. And we started in the infant classroom, so they kind of are used mm -hmm. to it throughout the whole program, and I think it really helps a lot when you come to the pre-K room and the school age room. Desiree, the director of the Child Care Center, says they kick off their farm-to-school program every summer. So basically, we try to highlight a certain type of food, either a vegetable or a fruit, for the first couple weeks, and we'll use it in different ways. So we might have cut up strawberries with breakfast. We might paint with strawberries for an art project. We might do a berry tasting. Um, we try to develop, teach children a different way of using their food and fun ways. We do songs and things like that, too. But in an agricultural state, the access to fresh and healthy food is far from abundant. Mia knows this to be true. Something that I've seen here on the north side uh, that is similar in some ways but a little bit more dense is that people do have to walk and they do have to, to bus to, to get to many places. Growing up, Mia and her family moved often. Many times they found themselves living in a food desert or what some call a food swamp where accessibility to healthy food is limited. How did that affect you or affect your family? Yeah, it was really interesting to live in cities like Brooklyn Center um, or Brooklyn Park or even Champlin at times where uh, if there was a grocery store, there was just one grocery store. It was either Festival Foods or it was Cub Foods and that was it. Mm -hmm. And for the suburban life, you'd think, oh, that's, you know, it's an amazing life. You know, there's plenty of access. The average median income is really high. Uh, but when you are living in a suburb, but your car is broken down, you have absolutely no money, uh, the bus system isn't as fluid as you might see in the Twin Cities. You're either having to walk, uh, which we have done, or bike or find a way to get to the grocery store to spend you know, the $3 or $4 that you found hanging around in your house. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis and Wilder Research, Minnesota ranks seventh worst state in the nation with no groceries close to their homes. Hundreds of thousands of Minnesotans live in areas where they have bounded or no access to fresh, healthy food. More and more people are really interested in eating healthy foods, but not everyone has the same access to healthy foods in their neighborhood. Kristen is the senior public health specialist at the Minneapolis Health Department, where she worked to increase the affordability and accessibility of healthy food in small food retail stores one being Eastside Co-op in Northeast Minneapolis. So how important are places like this Eastside Food Co-op? I think places like the Co-op are critical as food sources within the neighborhood. Um, people need a place that's easy to access, that's affordable, that has a lot of variety, and the Co-op provides those things to the neighborhood. The Neighborhood Co-op opened its doors in 2003. We just did this $6.1 yes, million dollar expansion. Um, which really has given us the opportunity. We're serving about 30% more of our community. In a community with very few grocery stores nearby, Eastside Food Co-op is dedicated to providing natural, organic food. 
We're in year two now of offering uh, Fresh Dills programs, which we paired up with NCG, the National Co-op's grocers. And so we all go in there, they kind of bid out all those bigger sale items. So we're able to bring, like you can kind of see up here, so we advertise, we're only, not all the co-ops do this. We're able to give um, lower prices on some of those staples. So apples and cheeses mm -hmm. and meats and stuff like that, that generally are the most expensive mm -hmm. things. Kristen's efforts led to the passage of staple food ordinance for the city, which requires places like gas stations, corner stores, pharmacies, dollar stores, to shelve certain amount of nutritious food. How effective has this amendment been for the community in Minneapolis? As a result of the staple foods ordinance, there's a minimum amount of healthy foods that are now available in all types of what we call licensed grocery stores. So that can be anything from a full service grocery store to a corner store or a gas station or a pharmacy. And so we've been able to raise the um, minimum stocking requirements for these stores. Stores across the city are required to stock basic foods such as fruits and vegetables, whole grains, eggs, and low-fat dairy. It's very essential to have corner stores that have healthy options available at low prices to the community. Adam, one of the founders of Brightside Produce Distributors, works with over 30 corner stores across North and South Minneapolis to help supply them with fresh produce in order to comply with the staple food ordinance. A lot of these wholesale places have like a $150 order minimum. And if you're a corner store, I mean, I'm sure that you could imagine how hard it would be to sell $150 worth of produce within a week, week and a half mm -hmm. before it starts going bad. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible for most of these corner store owners. And so Brightside, where we play our role, is we actually go to these wholesale places and we get cases of fruits and vegetables. And what we'll do is we'll take that to the stores. We'll make a show box that'll have one of everything that we have. So it'll be a bunch of bananas and a tomato and an apple and lettuce, just really almost anything that you can think of. Whatever the stores are demanding, that's what we try to get our hands on for the stores and the community that you know shops at those stores. When we return, how one community is using food as a tool for health and social change. Across the plain fields of Minnesota, you'll find farmland, plenty of farmland, many in rural parts of the state. But that's not the only place in Minnesota you'll find farms. I've been growing food uh, in my backyard since I was a little kid. Daryl oversees the community-based St. Olaf Urban Farm Site in North Minneapolis. Has there been more of a demand for fresh produce over the years? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, I don't often agree with the way uh, the north side is described, so I definitely believe there's plenty of access here. Uh, I think what's lacking is uh, the knowledge about food and how to ex access food, how to grow your own food. In a community with nearly 70,000 people, North Minneapolis has only two grocery stores, but an abundant amount of fast food restaurants and corner stores. The St. Olaf Farm Site shares its garden with various Northside organizations, working to provide the community with fresh produce. Well, especially like these larger dandelion roots, make sure that you get, yeah, make sure you get them deeper. Remember Mia? She is now the Northside Fresh Coordinator and Policy Manager, working with a coalition of organizations towards a more sustainable and just food system in North Minneapolis one being Appetite for Change. This is probably the most cooperative community-led site you might see on the north side where you literally have different businesses and organizations mm -hmm. all working together, all working together, mm -hmm. going together. Appetite for Change plays a key role in the cooperative movement on the north side, using food as a vehicle for social change. Urban agriculture is one of their core efforts where hundreds of young people volunteer to help grow fresh produce in their community. Growing up in North, what was it like living in a community with little to no access to healthy, fresh food? I would say it would have affected me more when I was younger because I felt like when I was younger, you know, when you're a kid and you just have sugar, you don't really know what it's really doing to you. You just know you like it, you want more sugar. And now that I got older, I feel like it's something that's 
kind of hard for me to, to try to switch that, switch that up. Mm. So I'm, it's not that I'm addicted to sugar. But it was but, something um, that you grew up with. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to just let it go. Mm -hmm. Try to do things differently. Growing up in North Minneapolis, there, there, well, people say there's disadvantages, and they say we live in a food desert. We don't live in a food desert because there's things to eat. We just shouldn't eat them. And there is healthier options. Urban agriculture is one of their core efforts where young people of the north side volunteer to help grow and distribute fresh food to their community. So how important is it to work together as a community? Yeah. If you don't work as a community, it's like one thing that I was always told, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So here at Appetite for Change, we like to get people at the table and not just on the menu. So working as a community is really important because um, you know, everybody don't like to be involved in stuff and just getting them out there so they could have their voice heard because a lot of times our voices is the one that's always getting put down. So to get their message out, a group of young Minneapolis kids made a music video about farming called Grow Food to encourage the community to be more active about their food source. ASE got produce. ASE about to go cool. We gon' grow food. Grow food. ASE got produce. ASE about to go cool. Women in the kitchen. Women in the kitchen. What the hell's wealth? Social change. My fruits and veggies be off the chain. Want real food for real people? Gonna break your bread. Cafe. Room money, real money. That's all I need. Get the green. Got clean. Wanna make a hundred meals? We done cooked a hundred meals. Cause my people gotta eat. The Grow Food video was a way for us to get out the news about growing healthy food and eating healthy. Well, we don't really like to use the word healthy because some kids are like, I don't like healthy. That's broccoli, that's is bell peppers and things like that. It's really your comfort food and just easing back into it. But the Grow Food video was another way for us to get out the news to kids because music videos, Drake, uh, Hotline Bling, that got out the news to some kids. Or like music video is like the music gets stuck in your head and it replays and replays and replays. And grow food, grow food, chop it up, chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it up. That tells kids that they can grow their own food. The fresh produce grown on the urban farms are distributed to places like corner stores and restaurants in the community. Appetite for Change, because of the um, facility that they have with their cafe and their Kendrick Kitchen um, cafeteria, give us a place where we can take the food, aggregate it, clean it, bundle it, so that we then can provide it to both the cafe and to corner stores and other vendors. So whether it's having Green Garden Bakery's baked goods in the store, or Project Sweetie Pie, or Youth Farm, or Appetite for Change's produce in North Market, or the co-op in the produce section, really being able to use the Northside Fresh Coalition as a vehicle for us all to move towards um, creating a better future for our youth, um, a better life for our elders and those that are, cr are currently in the community um, together. Is this the key to eliminating so-called food deserts? Is this the you key? Know? Yes. This is one of the keys. This it's is one of the keys. keys. But this is yeah. one of Because once you learn how to grow your own food and take care of your own food, like, we ain't going to be needing the places that they have for us no more. Like, mm -hmm. One question that always get asked to us, is the food that's here, here because we eat it or do we eat it because it's here? And for me, I think we eat it just because it's here. Like, mm -hmm. when you just live in North Minneapolis and you never went anywhere else, it's the only thing that we know. And when you start to learn about different things and expand your mind, you start to learn that there's... I never knew what a co-op was. Yeah. yeah. Never been to a co-op. Sure. All I knew was Cub Foods and Solo. Mm -hmm. And now... I know about Seward, I know about the WEG, um, the North Market, um, Worth Co-op, like I know about that stuff and I know what they have in there and like just letting people know that we do have other options and we don't have to just depend on the food that we have right here on this block. Up next on Our Issues Twin Cities, the first full service grocery store in North Minneapolis to open in more than 10 years. Food deserts can be found all over the state. The most impacted areas are in low-income communities. We have pickups every day um, so that we're able to minimize all that waste of really good, healthy produce and fresh food and get them out to the community. Eastside Co-op has been providing fresh, healthy food in Northeast Minneapolis since 2003. 
How vital is it that everyone, and I mean everyone, has access to fresh, healthy food? Uh, I mean, I don't know what would, uh, it's, that's, that's the human side of it, really. I mean, I don't know how to separate, you know, food, being able to have access to food is really tied in with social justice mm -hmm. in every way. And now a nearby community plans to do the same. The North Market, a full-service grocery store, is expected to open this fall. It will be the first full-service grocery store in North Minneapolis to open in more than 10 years. This is North Minneapolis, and this is where we're at, uh, the North Market site. There, in a two, two miles radius, we do not have any grocery stores in the area. Vinan is Pillsbury United Community's Director of Design and Innovation. We know um, all around the country grocery stores tend to be the hub of a community. Um, usually you have a grocery store and you see businesses prop up around it. And so we know that grocery stores can do that and our, you know, our long-term goal is to see that thing happening. Vinan says North Market will be unlike any standard grocery. Along with its offering of fresh produce, the anticipated grocery store will have a wellness center, offer cooking classes and health services. But most importantly, it will create jobs for the community. What will North Market offer to this neighborhood that has been far too underserved? Mm -hmm. Well, I will say the first thing that we are going to offer is a um, affordable, affordable food um, that will be fresh. We are working with a lot of local, um, we want to work with local farmers, we want to also work with the large distributors to bring fresh produce and meat into the, um, into the community. Mm -hmm. That is our number one offering. Our second offering is that we are going to offer the community a place that they can be proud of, uh, that they can shop at. They will know that this, this store was built based on their feedback. As I mentioned earlier, we did a lot of community engagement. They will know, they will see parts of the store, parts of the business that had their input. They, they could actually point out to. And they, we, will be working, we will be hiring people who live in the area. And so the store will have that feel of like, this feels right. This feels like North Minneapolis. The North Market Project has been underway for more than two and a half years, receiving grants through programs like Good Food Access. North Market is a great example, first of having community engagement for a significant period of time to understand what type of a grocery store people wanted to see, and beyond just a store, what other services um, would make it feel like basically a part of the community. Run by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, Good Food Access assists grocery stores and small food retailers with loans, grants, and technical assistance to help existing or new ventures provide healthy and affordable foods. Leah is the campaign manager. In what ways is Good Food Access aiming to boost local economies, create jobs, generate tax revenues, to communities that need it most. Yeah. We know that groceries, whether it's a grocery store or a corner store, a farmer's market, any retail solution on food, that is a driving force, not only for people's immediate needs, but also for the economic vitality of those same communities. So when we bring in a store, um, when we can support the resources to, to have a store, then that helps people, local residents, have access to those jobs. Um, farmers and growers of food have access to revenue for what they're doing, and that tends to have a ripple effect into other economic development in the region. So it, if people are going someplace for their food every week, then that's also where they'll do other, other shopping, and you know, more of those resources stay in a community if you have that foundation. The Good Food Access Program will be seeking a $10 million annual appropriation in the 2017 legislation session to address the need for healthy food access solutions around the state. Why is it so important in combating food deserts across the state? We are asking the state to make an investment in this um, because we know that it's it makes sense for the state to invest in solutions and improving access to food as opposed to paying for healthcare costs related to chronic diseases that you know are currently in place because 
of the food access challenges that people are experiencing. So we want the state instead to help local farmers, mm -hmm. to help entrepreneurs, and to help people who want access to food by providing grants, loans, and technical assistance through the Good Food Access Program that can support locally driven solutions. It could be a grocery store, a corner store, a farmer's market, um, you know, any range of, of solutions to make sure people have a place to find healthy, affordable food. I'm just looking forward to that first customer mm. making that first purchase, mm -hmm. smiling and say, you know, just being really happy that, that, that we are here. We are here to serve the community. With much anticipation, North Market is expected to open its doors this coming November. And because Minnesota is among the worst states with access to healthy food, communities around the state are working hard to change that. New Horizon Academy in Apple Valley believes healthy eating should be taught at an early age. How does promoting healthy food at such a young age set them up for the rest of their lives? I think once you grow up eating healthy food, you want it, you kind of crave it. Every day, the children eat fresh food from the center's garden. And before the hungry schoolagers can dig in, they make a wish. Thank you for joining me this week on Our Issues Twin Cities. I'm Rana Kamal. See you next time.